This will be a recording for a tutorial on Fusion Pro doing variable data numbering. Uh, so we're going to start out with InDesign and here I've got a one up InDesign file that we're going to be working with. Um, when you're doing variable data numbering with Fusion Pro you only need to start with a one up version of your document. So we can see where we're going to put the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and put a text box there for where I want my number. And I'm going to go ahead and check where this number is going to be because I didn't do that on the sample. Okay, so I see where it's going to be lined up. It's going to be aligned to the left. And I'm going to go ahead and put my starting number in, which is going to be 25,000. 501. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up the font. I usually will use Helvetica Nue Bold Condensed for numbers at 25 point if I can, or excuse me, 24 point as long as there's room, so that looks good. Uh, next, we're actually going to set up the Fusion Pro for this. So over here in our Fusion Pro window, we see we can export it as several different things. We're going to do a variable text frame. Uh, and overall, that is as simple as it gets for the setup in InDesign for this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use this menu here to export to a PDF. Uh, you can see we can only use certain lengths of file names, so save is grayed out. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and select where I'm putting this. So right now I'm just going to put this in my sample variable data file. I'm going to call it sample variable data. We've got no bleed. Uh, here we would put in our bleed if we need it. Uh, nine points is a standard eighth inch bleed. Uh, here I've got a setup for exporting, which is high quality print, flat and transparency. This doesn't always work. Um, it works out of Illustrator, but it doesn't always work out of InDesign. So uh, if you do have a document with a lot of detail that you have to do as a PDF, you'll, you may need to flatten that. I'll go over that in a separate tutorial. Uh, so we've got everything ready. Go ahead and export the PDF. Acrobat's going to open up uh, with our Fusion Pro ready to go. Uh, so this is asking us to define our data for the numbering. Now because this is a variable data numbering job uh, it works a little bit differently. We don't have a specific data source that we're choosing uh, but we don't want to create a flat file and we don't want to import from another, not another document so we do want to specify our data source. Our data source is actually going to be none because we don't have a file for it. Uh, that'll be it. It'll take you to none and then just hit finish. Uh, from here, we're going to create a rule, which is how we're going to generate our numbers. So up here, I'm going to do the edit rules, do new, and we're going to scroll down and find the sequential numbering rule. Uh, Fusion Pro actually has a specific rule for this. So sequential numbering rule. Next. Uh, well you, can't, you can rename it if you want, but the use sequential numbering rule, rule is usually fine. Uh, once again, we're going to enter our starting number, which in this case is going to be 25501. Padding, if we did want to pad it out with zeros, uh, so if we wanted it to be you know, 001 or something like that, we can pad it to the correct amount of digits. Uh, since we are not padding this with any zeros, I'm going to go ahead and select the five digits. So it'll show our rule in our rules window. Click OK. Go ahead and select our text box, which is going to hold our variable data. Edit the text. You can see here's where I put in the numbers from the InDesign document. It actually carries over. Go ahead and highlight that. Up here in the variable window, this is where all of our variable data is held. So we can see we've got several built-in variable fields from Fusion Pro and we've also got our rule that we created earlier. I'm going to hit select that and insert it replacing 
the placeholder number that we had. Uh, if you need to, you can also edit the font or text size or lots of other uh, formatting options for the text. Uh, since I've already formatted, correct font, correct size, correct color, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Uh, next thing I do is I always want to preview to make sure, because a lot of the times the text box in InDesign is set up correctly, but when it transfers over to Fusion Pro, it may not be large enough to accommodate the number. Um, or also the number is sometimes not positioned exactly where we want it. In this case, that looks fine. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Uh, always make sure to save frequently. Um, sometimes Acrobat is a little unstable uh, with Fusion Pro but this we're looking okay and so we're gonna go ahead and get ready to compose into a finished data file. Uh, because we don't have a data source our output file is blank so we're gonna go ahead and fill that. So I'm just gonna go and choose a location for this. So there's our variable data test save that and to start out with I am going to change the output format to PPML because this is a black and white document that's going to be run on the 4110. The 4110 can handle PPML files. Uh, it's a compressed type of variable data file that can be processed much more quickly than say a PDF. Um, the 4110 is the only machine that handles this. So PPML is our output format, and you can see it changes the extension from PDF to zip. Input. This is the where we actually tell it how many uh, final sheets we want. So in this case, I want to do a thousand records. Um, excuse me, a thousand finished sheets. So. We're going to do one to a thousand. So this is again total number of finished documents that I want. Um, output is just a more complex series of the original uh, output that we had in Compose. Uh, usually these options are right embed fonts. We always want to embed fonts. Uh, we always want to embed font subset. Uh, we never want to use RGB color space. Um, Output to multiple files is good if you are if you have an extremely large document that you do have to do to a PDF. Um, so I'll use that for Honda sometimes or color work. Um, for this particular one, don't need it. Um, I'm going to go into options real quick on the PPML just to show um, that you always want to make sure that this is not checked the way that we're doing this because uh, we want all of our graphics files to be saved inside the zip file that will contain the other PPML data. Uh, other than that, everything else should look good. Variable data test.zip is my file name. Imposition. Uh, this is where we'll tell Fusion Pro to lay out our document multiple up uh, so we don't, don't have to do that ourselves. So what you're going to do is use imposition definition and browse to it inside the templates folder on the storage drive there is a Fusion Pro layouts folder and inside there you'll find a lot of pre-created templates that I've already set up. Um, for this particular one we are running it as a five and a half, eight and a half document on an 1117 and four up and it's going to be an infinite stack so we want it to stack the numbers not do them in a series one two three four on the same page we want two underneath one so I'm going to select that one open mark offset uh, because this is a finish size document. This is not important. If we were having crop marks on it, then this would set the offset for the crop marks again, nine points, eighth inch bleed. Uh, don't need any slip sheets. I'm just going to go through the rest real quick. This is usually as far as you need to go, but I'm just going to go through the rest real quick. Graphics. Um, graphics are never downsampled for full resolution printing. Uh, if you do have a lot of graphics, you can select the one of the other ones, which would allow for faster previewing and full resolution graphics, but you always want to make sure full resolution for printing is what you have. Um, drop shot effect, use grayscale is fine, and enable drop shot emoted preview is also fine. Security, uh, because we're not doing a PDF, that's all grayed out. 
document info again because we're not doing a PDF or some type of document that can hold that that is not even in there advanced is just a few little things abort on errors we usually don't want to because typically errors are not something that's going to cause us a problem um, search path we don't need that would be if we were using the PPML with external files and hyphenation rules we do want on English and our dictionary this specifies our English dictionary uh, so again typically you don't need to go past imposition uh, when setting this up so I'm going to go ahead and save those settings and hit compose Fusion Pro processes the list uh, see it's giving me here an error about a font although I'm not sure why because it's never done that before until today um, and the PDFs that I'm printing have come out fine regardless so that finishes our data merge uh, because we are doing a PPML file, it ends up being a zipped file, which we can't see into. Uh, because of that, I usually like to do a second composition to check for things. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my compose settings to PDF. And I can go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and leave variable data test as the file name just because I know that I've got a PDF and that's going to be my test file. Next thing I do is I don't need to process all a thousand records. I only need to process maybe this is a four up file. So maybe eight to 12 just for a few sheets. I'm going to go ahead and do 12. Uh, and that's it. Everything else I know is already correct for my setup. So you can see it processes it view as PDF. And we can see again that the font comes out fine on here. And we can also see that it's laid it out correctly one on the first page two on the second page three on the third page and so on for my numbering sequence um, and that